The horrific train accident in Orissa shook India. 270 people have died. Thousands have been injured. Coromandel Express is arriving at Orissa Balasore at a speed of 120 kmph. The goods train has been stopped in the loop line to make way for this express carriage. But due to a technical glitch, the Coromandel Express was diverted to the loop line instead of the main line. Due to this, all the other compartments except the last five AC compartments were derailed after hitting the goods train which was already standing there and many people were killed. Many were injured. The Yashwantpur Express on another nearby track was traveling from Bangalore to Howrah at the same speed of 120 kmph at the same time when the Coromandel Express crashed. Then some coaches of this Coromandel Express fell on the last three coaches of the Eswantpur Express and derailed it as well. Some of these compartments were hatched twice. The occupants were seriously injured. They have died. But the surprising thing is that some of them have survived. The government has announced compensation for the dead and injured. This money will protect his family financially to some extent even if he is in grief. How painful it would be for him to travel with his family in this train and all the family members die and only one person survives. What is worse than this is when a member of his family has been beaten terribly and his heart is coming out and he is fighting for his life. How much hellish pain it must be for other members of that family. It took several days for the survivors of the accident to recover from the shock of seeing so many dead bodies before their eyes. But the survivors of the accident say that it was only by God's grace that I survived. If that is the case, the question arises as to why God did not save the injured and the dead in this accident. According to the law of karma, the sinner will be punished and the good will be rewarded. Surely getting involved in such accidents is punishment. A doubt for many people is that there must have been children involved. Children will ask what the sin was. The question even arises as to whether all commit the same sin so that all receive the same punishment. Not everyone involved in this accident is equally injured. Not everyone dies. It cannot be said that everyone received the same help. For example a sister had reserved AC compartment in Korumandal Express to Bhubaneswar. He had reserved a sleeper compartment from Bhubaneswar to Chennai. This accident happened before reaching Bhubaneswar. So he did not suffer any major damage in this accident. She was safe as he was inside the AC compartment at the end. Imagine what would have happened to her if she had perhaps booked a sleeper coach from the start. This is the law of karma. This sister is also punished. In fact, when we get into such an accident or illness, we are punished for our past sins and we get rid of those sins. Like that. This sister stays in the dark for a long time till 11 pm. Then a college bus arrives and takes him safely to Bhubaneswar. He reached Chennai safely by train sent by the government there. Now he has that one day of mental anguish. But above all, comes the unshakable belief that it must be God's mercy that we survived unscathed. This one incident is enough to explain the law of karma. There may be problem between husband and wife within a family. There may be problem between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. There may be problems between parents and children. There may be issue between co-borns. When the family is traveling together in a train, when there is an accident like this, if one person is stuck on the deathbed, they will think in their mind that we have behaved according to the heart of others because of our ego for so long. The very person to whom we have given grief may now be in a position to save us. It would even appear that perhaps God has punished me so severely to remove a misunderstanding of Him. If we keep our mind very light and without any negative thoughts we can avoid such problems and accidents. 
God guarantees that if we never give grief to anyone, nature will not give us grief. Whether we give grief to others or we grieve ourselves, our thought vibrations disturb the Vayu realm itself. This is why nature also gives us grief. If we want to not give grief to anyone then we must learn to see others only as good people. That means we should see only the good qualities of others. Don't look at other people's faults. A period of 5000 years is called a kalp. What happens in one kalp repeats itself in every kalp. Every soul has a record of what they will do during the entire kalp. Everyone is acting accordingly. If we know this secret, even if others give us grief and speak to hurt our hearts, they are playing their part. I don't need to exaggerate this and you will remain silent. God says that he will not give them sorrow again. Not only that, 100 years before the end of this world, God spoke this wisdom in the body of an old man. Now we are in that last 100 years. So all the human beings we see in the world are bound to die one day. So attachment to perishable people and things is what gives us sorrow. Everyone's death is preordained, we just don't know when. But at precisely the time whose death is to happen, it will happen precisely at that time. If this secret is always running through your mind, you will not be attached to any mortal man. It's only when you get attached that you cringe when someone dies in front of your eyes in sudden accidents like this. Not only that, a soul leaves one body and takes another body. It will take rebirth. If we talk to others and focus only on that soul that shines like a star in the middle of their brow, you will not care if they die. Because your attention never goes to their body. You saw only the soul. That soul will definitely not die. It is going to take another life and live on this earth. So you will not be moved by the sudden death of your family members because you have the wisdom of why I should cry. You will not be sad. Even then you will remain calm. Because your focus was always on the soul. You always felt yourself as a peaceful soul. So you will not lose your peace in any situation. For 5000 years the soul takes the vehicle of different bodies to travel around this world. For the first 2500 years when this earth was heaven, because we did not commit any sin. The body we got was very healthy and beautiful. So everyone had perfect life there. But for the next 2500 years when this earth turns into hell, we mistake ourselves for the body. So we become addicted to sense pleasure. We have committed many sins. As a result the Pancha Buddhas also started losing power. So our body formed from this weak Pancha Bhutta was also weak. Especially at this time, the last birth of Kali Yuga, the body is very weak because everyone's soul is full of sin. So anyone can die any time. At the same time attachment within man has grown too much. So if you cannot bear the sudden death of your own, it is wise not to form new such relationships. A lot of women became widows at a young age when the coronavirus hit. They couldn't forget their husbands. The death of a child hurts more than the death of a husband. That is why God says not to form any new relationship. God says to explain as much as possible the relationships that have already formed. Attachment to parents, attachment to siblings. For that, we should keep remembering Lord Shiva as much as possible like a star in the golden light world. Also, one should always remember oneself as a soul shining like a star in the brow. Through this the power of purity fills the soul. Due to this, sinful qualities like lust, anger, attachment, greed and egoism are removed from the soul. Through this the soul becomes fully aware. The intellect becomes clear away from all delusions. So even when you interact with your family, your focus is on the imperishable soul. You will always have the awareness that the soul will leave this body and take another body any time. 
Some relations will seek you out and give you happiness to give you the benefit of your holy account. But that happiness will not last forever. Once your holy account is empty, those relationships will be separated from you either permanently or temporarily. Suddenly your relations die or turn traitor against you. Kali Yuga is the name of the age in which all these things take place. So don't misunderstand this as negative thinking. If the thought of this is always running through your mind, when such a negative event happens, your mind will not be shocked and face it calmly. Especially in this train accident. The victims were shocked because they had no idea that such an incident would happen. When dealing with others, if your focus is only on that soul, you will not get attached to others. If there is no attachment, you will not commit any sin. Don't expect anything. At the same time, having the wisdom of Kali Yuga, you will not be shocked if they turn against you. This is why in the Bible Jesus Christ told his disciples that one of you will betray me. In fact, the event that is happening now, which is the end of the Kali Yuga, has been written in advance in the Bible. At the end of the Kali Yuga, Jesus Christ had a sense of caution that anyone could turn against us at any time. But he loved his disciples but did not hold them hostage. The betrayal of others did not cause him any pain. But at the same time there is wisdom that the respective soul is playing its own role so that it does not matter if they turn against me in the future. He was clear that I would kindly do my duty to them. But due to the fact that this spiritual knowledge and knowledge about Kali Yuga is not clearly mentioned in the Bible, we have mistakenly understood that the Bible, Quran, Ramayana and Mahabharat are all history that happened in the past. All these are prophetic books that tell us the way to face the problems we are going to face at the end of Kali Yuga. It is only when you are in the consciousness of the body that you consider the parents who gave you that body as your own, and all that you have earned through that body as yours. And you will become egoistic and commit many sins. But when you understand yourself as an imperishable soul, you do not commit any sin because of the fear that you will have to suffer the punishment for your sin in the next life. And you will focus on adding virtue to the soul. Because it is according to the merit in the soul that we have a healthy body, good relationships and wealth. You will have the wisdom that all these will leave us when the merit decreases. The greatest blessing in existence is to realize that we are souls and remember Lord Shiva forever in the golden world of light and to teach the same to others. Through this, to the extent that our meritorious account increases, we will attain a higher position in the heaven that will be created after the end of the Kali Yuga. So we don't worry about death like other people. But our only concern is that the birth we take after death should be superior in every respect to this birth. For that, we will have the same thought that we should increase the virtue in the soul. Those who do not have this wisdom, indulge in the pleasures of Kali Yuga and commit sin upon sin and will be born in a very low state in the next life. So when dealing with your family, you should often keep asking the question, Am I in the mood to bear this if this person dies now? Even then, only those who practice the practice of being calm can remain calm when their loved ones die. It is not God's job to prevent death. But it is the work of God to give this wisdom that destroys the sin in the soul and fills the soul with virtue. That wisdom is available absolutely free in the name of Murli at all Brahma Kumari's Raja Yoga Meditation Center. It is also available on YouTube and websites. We are giving its links in the description below this video. Must see and benefit. People who are with us can die or leave us at any time. Aim to receive as many blessings as possible from them while they are with us. It is because of this lack of awareness that we commit many sins and receive curse upon curse from others. It will destroy our future.
The blessing of others is the main reason for our future and next birth to be happy. Perhaps even if we die in accidents like this, we will die satisfied because we are filled with the blessings of others as long as we live. Otherwise, we should understand that the curses we have acquired from others will continue to accompany us in the next life after death and give us grief. God also issues that the one who realizes himself as Atma and remembers Sada Shiva will not die. If you keep all your relations with the imperishable God alone, attachment to mortal men will automatically disappear. So you will never be sad. But if you are attached to mortals you are bound to grieve one day. Om Shanti